All right, so I guess let's just get to the Patrick video since we're so long. This is what many people have wanted the last few weeks. Me covering Patrick Willems. Patrick explains Star Wars The Last Jedi and why it's great. 4,000 dislikes, 9,000 likes. One of those dislikes is for me because this video is fucking awful. As is all of Patrick's re recent videos. Even though I don't hate every video Patrick's made. But the recent ones have been really terrible. Like the storytelling language of Star Wars. That's a horrible video. But this guy has 200,000 subscribers, so he must be good, right? Obviously, that's a sign of quality that he's not another one of those boring movie essay channels where they don't say a goddamn thing with any kind of insight. And everything he says is just generic normie tier shit to get the most clicks as possible. Obviously, Patrick is an intellectual who understands movies on a deeper level than any of us. Previously on Patrick Explains. I thought you were finally on your way back to the city. Wow, I feel so awake right now. It's 3 a.m. Do you think it's that tea he's been drinking? Oh, wow, this hilarious humor with his parents about the tea he's been drinking. This is so funny. I don't know how Patrick tapped into such comedic genius. What a great premise. I'm going to explain things to my parents across a giant Charlie Rose-sized table. Is there caffeine in it? Patrick, what's going on? Not Patrick, what's going on? Thing. I just wanted to come back, see you guys, and have a chat. What's with the camera? Oh, I'm recording this so I can put it on the internet, obviously. I think we're... Oh my god, dude, this joke was dead the first time you did it. I can't believe he's still doing it. Like, really, I just almost want to skip over it. I mean, this is terrible. Like, I'm trying to be as nice as possible in this part, because fuck it, this is just a sketch, it's not his analysis, whatever, but like... Dude, that's all you could come up with, like, hey, look, it's a camera, Mom and Dad, I'm putting it on the internet. You're ignoring the bigger question. Who's that person next to the camera? What's up? Oh, that's just my intern. How the hell did he get an intern? Usually I'm here to talk about movies I think are... So he has a really boring, cringe, feminist-looking painter coffee shop ass bitch sitting there on the phone with a joke. Like, jokes that would have been dead ten years ago, but obviously Patrick has a horrible sense of humor because he finds The Last Underrated. Jedi funny. Don't get the attention they deserve, but this one... What is in that coffee and tea? What are you drinking? One ...is different. I want to talk about the biggest movie of 2017. A movie that pretty much everyone who watches movies... I will say, though, better use of music than Cabin Fever. ...has seen. I want to talk about Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Because for some reason, a whole lot of people don't like this movie. Oh, well, let's go into that. Um, let's see. It's stupid. None of the things the characters do make any sense. It was clearly a hate letter to Star Wars, in particular the original trilogy. Uh, there was no carryover from The Force Awakens to The Last Jedi. And Ryan Johnson has confirmed this. Nothing makes any sense from scene to scene. It doesn't have any internal logic. It betrays a lot of lore and things that were continuity things throughout the entire series. Um, God, I mean, its themes don't make any sense. Its collection of themes don't make any sense. It's poorly paced. It's poorly edited. Um, the acting ranges from mediocre to adequate, depending on who you're watching. Uh, it has some nice aesthetics and sound design. It just goes on and on and on. It's a bad sequel to The Force Awakens. It's one of the worst Star Wars films. And um, it's insulting in a way that people didn't expect going into it. You know, if it was just a bad movie, I think that'd be one thing. But it's a film with a commentary and a meta uh, nature to it that isn't just commenting on the current state of Star Wars, but Star Wars fans. And this is obviously how Ryan Johnson feels, which I think his Twitter's made it very clear. It's also got a political bent, which has been exposed due to what we know about the producers and the filmmakers. So there's a lot of reasons to dislike this movie. But of course, Patrick, you're smarter than all of us and you understand film greater, uh, deeper than all of us. So I'm sure that you'll explain this to your parents and thus to me in a very uh, articulate, wonderful, insightful way. I'm feeling at the end of this video, I will just completely love The Last Jedi. A lot of people are really angry about it. Now, instead of telling you why you should see it, since everyone watching this already has, I want to tell you why I love it. Because I do. I think this movie is goddamn incredible. It is e I think this movie is goddamn incredible.
easily the best Star Wars movie since The Empire Strikes Back. And yes, but what do you think about Batman 89? Also, why do people always say it's the best Star Wars movie since The Empire Strikes Back? Okay, so you have Return of the Jedi, which is a good film with a lot of bad decisions and mediocre parts, but also a lot of good stuff. Then you have nothing but bad movies. So what the fuck does that mean? Like, they always say that. It's the best one since Empire Strikes. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't... And also, this is not better than Return of the Jedi. Let me make it... This isn't even better than Phantom Menace. I don't, I, I don't know what world people live in. Like, well, at least it's better than Phantom... I disagree. I don't think this film's as good as Phantom Menace. But beyond all that, like... Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. That's an empty compliment that people throw out. It's the best one since Empire. Until the next one comes out. Until the next one comes out. You probably think Force Awakens is better than Return of the Jedi. Who gives a shit what you think? Alright, like, who gives a shit, like, Qu it's Quentin Tarantino's best movie since Pulp Fiction. Yeah, he hasn't made a lot of great movies since Pulp Fiction. Like, Jesus Christ. Everything you say is wrong. Well, I'm glad you saw a clock last night. Um, did you see a, a house with a cock and balls in it? Today, we're gonna talk about why. <laughs> Holy shit. Hold on, guys. Hold on. We gotta get this right. I'm back. I'm sorry about that. My apologies. Gosh damn it. Okay. I'm gonna play some music for you guys until I come back. I have to go grab something. By the way, I apologize. Uh, I don't think Last Jedi is better than Phantom Menace on any level, actually. On any level, quite frankly. I, I don't think it's got better special effects for the time. I don't think uh, the acting's any like far better. I think Liam Neeson's just as good as anyone is in that movie, but... The lightsaber duel in Phantom Menace and Duel of the Fates is better than anything. Alright, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Thank you for waiting so patiently, you beautiful people. <sighs> no, it is. It is poorly choreographed. The throne room scene is not the best lightsaber scene ever. What the fuck are you talking about? The best one is Luke versus Vader in Empire Strikes Back. That's not even debatable. <laughs> like Bathory and Elderberry, you can see them waiting for their turn. It's the tension between Luke and him in the uh, carbonite chamber, and what's going on emotionally, and Vader popping out. That's that's the blocking to that's more brilliant. It's not just a cool action scene. It actually has tension and great little. You'll see them full of surprises and all that. Yeah, but you're talking about in general. It's Luke versus Vader. It has the best storytelling. Uh, Ray and Kylo fighting them is just. Them teaming up with each other. 
which is kind of the point of the scene, and then some cool action beats. That's the whole point. Luke and Vader have so much more going on emotionally. <laughs> has so much more going on emotionally, though, the pacing of it. It's better set. The set's a lot more interesting. Um, so, yeah. The dialogue's better, and then you get the reveal with Vader being Luke's father. How do you top that? I mean, that's the payoff to that scene. It's amazing. And then Luke jumping off to commit suicide. And yeah, Duel of Fates, he sits over Kurgrat with So is the fight with Rey, Kylo, and the, I mean, same shit. All right, hold on. Now we can do this. All right, here we go. Hello, people. All right. Oh, God, now I just look like Razor Fist with the fucking script that he clearly writes for every video, though he claims it's a live monologue, but it's definitely a script, and you can see the script in his glasses. God fucking speed! No, wait. Light fucking speed! It's a Star Wars video. Okay, we're gonna party with Patrick. With Patrick. You'll be able to see him through my fucking eyes. We'll find out. Uh, what's so great about The Last Jedi? I have Yoda here. Oh, he's over there. Shit. I should have set something up across the table. But whatever. Okay, Patrick. Let's do this. Don't know. So I realize I already lost a lot of you right from the title of this video. Some of you are only here because this showed up in your recommendations, and you wanted a new opportunity to tell a stranger about why you hate this movie, but I just want to say something right up front. If you are- I'm a fucking idiot. That's just what I want to say right up front. I know a lot of you out there think that I'm going to say something new and interesting about this movie, but everyone who's tried to defend this movie is a fucking retard, and I will be no different. I just want to put that across to you, okay? Fine. Oh, you can see the reflection in his glasses, too. Good for you, brother. Oh god, we both even have a drink. Didn't plan how close this would be, by the way. Except I'm much better looking than Patrick, obviously. For a person who thinks that SJWs, our diversity, our feminism ruined this movie, or if you're going to tell me that I'm a Disney shill, or if you're going to tell me that I should watch a five-hour rant by some angry guy on YouTube, or if you- Oh! He just threw that out at Mahler. No, it's not a five-hour angry rant. It's a detailed analysis of why this movie's a shit piece of shit in every single way possible, but you don't want to watch it. Although I feel like you did, and part of the reason you made this video is because you're mad about some things that Mahler might have said about you, you fucking pussy. <laughs> well, a reenactment of what Patrick does in his free time. All right, um, dude, listen. There is SJW stuff in the new Star Wars films. Kathleen Kennedy's an SJW. People didn't just make that up. Okay, we didn't just we didn't just go. You know these these Star Wars films are political, and I don't like them. I me me me. No, it's clear they're political. She's made it clear. Ryan Johnson's made it clear. But you make political statements in this video about the upper class, and and how you like to see rich people get their asses hit because for some reason you hate rich people. Although I doubt you're poor, Patrick. I'm sure you probably make pretty good YouTube money, but and you wouldn't mind billing a million being a millionaire, but. Only the rich people you think are bad are bad. You mean the really rich people, the the 1%. But clearly, right there throwing out the political bias, he's not just saying in that if you have SJW problems, you're wrong. He's also saying that how dare you have a problem with that stuff. I believe in that stuff. Which is also just confirmed by the intern cameo, which I can clearly tell you everything about that girl from seeing her. I think I should kill myself because I liked a movie. Do Really? I honestly think you should just kill yourself because of who you are. I'm going to be completely honest here, Patrick. I don't think it's because you like The Last Jedi. I think it's because you made this video. You're doing this cringe material with your parents. You're everything that's wrong with this kind of content on YouTube and these essay videos and these analysis videos where you actually don't know a goddamn thing about movies, but you pretend to. Didn't you even say, I am the Terrence Malick of YouTube? Uh, no, no. I mean, maybe you are, because maybe at one point in your life you made something that was good and then you became a hack, so maybe you are Terrence Malick. Perhaps that's a fair comparison. Um, I mean, Mahler's smarter than you. Mahler doesn't even know a lot of movies, but he's smarter than you. Uh, his analogies are funny. He has a funny impression of you. Um, there's a lot more interesting content than yours, and if you don't understand the criticism of The Last Jedi, you're already strawmanning the criticisms. 
You're already going after the same. This is what people do when they defend The Last Jedi. They never point out why The Last Jedi is legitimately great. And they never really go after the main criticism. They always say people didn't get what they wanted. They always say people are making it political and they're assholes. They attack the people who don't like the movie instead of making a good argument for why the film's good. This is the, always care the defense. Care that much about Star Wars? Yeah, Mom, they really do. they do. care that much about Star Wars? Do. But everyone should just remember, this is a film about space wizards intended for children. I'm not saying you shouldn't... What? This argument again. It's a movie intended for children. It's PG-13. A bunch of adults saw it. In fact, the original Star Wars, I'd say the majority of people that saw it were adults, not kids. Uh, everyone who goes to see Star Wars now, adult, if little kids just went to go see these movies, it, they wouldn't make the money they made. Well, you quit saying that. Ryan Johnson did not make this movie for little kids. That's fucking retarded. This movie was not made only for children. This movie was made for everybody. And it's not just about space wizards. Also, what does that mean? This is a movie about hobbits with a ring trying to go destroy it. That doesn't mean it's not a great movie and that you shouldn't take things seriously or art seriously. You made a fucking 20-minute video about it. So that means you're taking it as serious or more so than the children you said this movie's made for. Maybe it was made for children or for people who have the mental capacity they can process things at the level of children. Although I think children are probably smarter than you. Don't take it seriously. Just maybe don't get too angry about it. We're not talking about gun control here. We're talking about a movie about space wizards intended for children. Anyway, it sucks that I feel oh, like that's I have such to an say easy that. defense to go worth... to. I should have I should have wrote down a thing. This is a video made by a retard. This I mean seriously, dude. I know what you're doing. You're trying to deflect all criticism on the shit video by saying, "Oh, it's just for kids. Don't take it seriously. Don't take movies in art seriously." Even though you're taking it seriously, you're taking serious what people have said about your plot hole video that was shit, and you're butt hurt, and you made this video response. Or this is a troll. Either way, though, you're taking it seriously and responding to it. You have a whole YouTube career out of taking movies seriously. What's wrong with taking art seriously? What's wrong with taking Star Wars seriously? Art helps us bear the pain of life. What, what, are you saying that we need to take more serious issues like gun control? I'd love to hear your opinion on gun control, Patrick. I'm sure you don't have some basic left-leaning view on gun control that isn't backed up by any actual research or statistics or nuance. Because you don't understand those things. Because you think this is a good movie. And because you probably like Tree of Life. Worth wading into this shitstorm anyway, but honestly, I just love this movie. And I want to talk about it. Before I start talking about Well, I just hate this movie, and I've already talked about it, but I guess we'll talk about your video. Getting pretty low on the on the juice here, though. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm. Ah, tasty. So tasty. Talking about The Last Jedi, I need to quickly run through my history with Star Wars because context matters. I mostly love the original- Even though he provides almost no context throughout this video, let me make this very clear. Original trilogy, I think the prequels are generally not good even if they contain some cool ideas. I think The Force Awakens is pretty good. Yeah, it plays things super safe and basically- So you have the most generic taste just on these movies. You, you say what almost everyone says, like, I like the original trilogy. Prequels aren't good, they have some stuff I like, and Force Awakens is pretty decent. Like, so you have nothing... So you have no reason to give us a context and insight. This is the generic opinion on the new Star Wars films. Like, you couldn't say, I didn't like Force Awakens, or actually, you know, I, I don't think the first film's that great. Like, this really doesn't add any context. This just, just is hits a waste of time hope, filler. But the movie had Ad to revenue. do three things. It had to feel like Star Wars again. It had to introduce new characters that we wanted to follow into future movies. And it had to bridge the 30-year gap in the story. That's all it had to do. It just had to do those three things. It didn't have to tell a good story. It didn't have to have good themes. It didn't have to have good cinematography, it didn't have to have good pacing, it didn't have to have all... It just had to have these three things. That's all it had to do. According to Patrick's logic, because that's how simplistic this fucking video is, instead of actually getting in the meat of all the things about a movie, like I did with my Star Wars videos, he's gonna be like, it just needed to do these three things. That's all it needed to do. And it did that. Like, you could have pointed out things that were better positives for The Force Awakens, honestly. I would say the pacing is something. Like, it just had to be a fast-moving adventure. He's not saying that he's picking three things to try to structure his argument in a certain way because the video, it's very disingenuous, this whole video. This is what a lot of these hacky YouTube channels do. They'll throw out a th theory or an idea or something they claim is like the narrative to put you on and try to pretend that it's some kind of objective 
um, uh, point of view they're taking. Like, this is what this thing had to do, or what it did, and it succeeded, and it backs up their argument. Instead of being like, well, there's all these things, but I sort of like these things. He's saying this is what it had to do. Now you're like, oh, it's subjective, it's an opinion, all that. But no, he's doing these things to be manipulative. This is very cho this is chosen to be in a particular way. It's also in a way to get clicks. Now, this video might have worked in YouTube a few years ago. Or if, if there wasn't so much stuff going on with Star Wars and The Last Jedi right now. But in the current YouTube climate, the reason a video like this is going to get so much backlash is because people are wiser to this kind of format now. And there's other types of content that go into much more detail why The Last Jedi and Force Awakens are bad movies in, in major ways. How the, the screenplays are just horrible. But Patrick's going to gloss over that for the pretty package. This video in itself encapsulate the experience of sort of watching these new Star Wars films. Pretty on the surface. Maybe sort of you can buy it as what it's supposed to be. But really it's empty and hollow. And that's what... Maybe in a way this video is brilliant because Patrick's showing you how people view these Star Wars films, how, how people who enjoy these films create things and how they wish art to be, uh, how, they, how they feel about things and how they, uh, and their lack of ability. So they attach themselves to things that they can feel like they could have made themselves maybe or they can connect to um, because it's easy to understand. Perhaps that's part of it. I'm, I'm on video wearing sunglasses. You don't have to. I'm just saying the guy in the video, he's wearing... It's me trying to do... I'll explain it later. Don't worry. Yeah, you're... You're like Snoke's backstory. It did ridiculously well at the first two. And with the third, it did okay. It's a little frustrating that we don't really know what the political landscape of the galaxy is. A little frustrating. I would say it's a fucking fundamental flaw that just takes out anything from you being able to buy into what's going on. You don't know what the fuck is going on. How the Republic works and what the significance of the Hosnian system being destroyed actually is. But I also get that they wanted to return to a familiar dynamic. I don't need to see Snoke, a Star Wars story, to understand who that guy is and what his... Yes, you you don't need that, but you could have like five minutes of extra screen time and dialogue explaining who Snoke is and what's going on and how did he show up and and just randomly turn Kylo to the dark side and where the fuck was he this whole time. You don't have to make a whole movie. But once again, very disingenuous. He's saying, I don't need a whole movie. No one said you needed a whole movie. No one wanted a whole movie on Snoke. That wasn't the argument of why Snoke's backstory is important to what's going on right now. Like, Patrick, you know this. You're just, this is bullshit what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You're talking to us like we're stupid children, which I guess is how you talk to your parents. But I'm not stupid, all right? You and I both understand what people's problem with the Snoke thing is. But you're trying to present it as something so much more simple, like, I don't need all, I understand, he's an archetype, it doesn't matter, he's just an evil villain type, like, like the Emperor. Yes, but this is a sequel franchise. There's continuity. They jumped ahead 30 years. We need to know, like, well, how did things get so fucked up in 30 years? It's not like New Hope where it's just a new film series and you can just buy that the Empire is in control and Palpatine's in control and that's just how it is. The Emperor is in control. That's what it is. Darth Vader's the bad guy. You can't just jump into a sequel where you bring back Luke, Han, and Leia and then be like, you know what? This is just how things are. No, because we ended on a happy beat in Return of the Jedi. Honestly, the stuff getting to this probably would have been a more interesting story anyway. Snoke, Smoke manipulating Kylo Ren. Luke tr failing to train his nephew. On and Leia's marriage falling apart. That sounds like a more interesting movie than following Rey. Deal is. So now that The Force Awakens had brought Star Wars back to the thing that we loved and was no longer two hours of Hayden Christensen green screened into ugly CGI, where did we go from here? It brought it back to where we love. Yeah, that's exactly what it here. did. Here. We've got all this set up. We've got a hell of a cliffhanger ending. So what comes next? Uh, it was literally a cliffhanger too. That's so bad. Uh, the ending's actually kind of I wish I liked the ending, because on paper it's not bad. Like, she goes to find Luke and takes some lightsaber. God, it's horrible. A lot of people had a lot of demands for this movie. Explanations and answers and confirmations of fan theories and... Well, they wanted explanations because J.J. James designed Force Awakens to be a film that raised a lot of questions. So it's completely fine that people wanted answers to things. When the film, a lot of things about Force Awakens, like the Knights of the Ren flashback dream sequence, like Rey's powers being so insanely higher than what we've ever seen from any Jedi, why things are so fucked up, where Snoke came from, those things would help make Force Awakens have more things to stand on. 
So you're not just sitting there going, well, this is a movie where things just happen, but things don't actually make sense. It's just a movie where something happens, something happens, something happens. It's bad writing, but sometimes this kind of writing is in literature or in anime even, and it gets fixed by a dense backstory later. But Last Jedi just skims over this stuff and just does its own thing like it's its own separate film, which creates problems because it doesn't expand on the things in Force Awakens. It really just makes its own storyline and makes Force Awakens a worse film, which it already was a bad movie, but now it's a worse film because at least things about it were like, well, at least, you know, maybe this thing will make sense. So when I rewatch it, this will have more context, the context that you said matters so much. Well, it's not provided in Last Jedi. Last Jedi doesn't actually give a context to Force Awakens, which is comedic considering you say context matters, even though I don't think you really care about that. Look, I made a whole video about that. But personally, those weren't really my top priorities. I just wanted something new. I didn't want another... That, that's all you wanted. You just wanted something new. You didn't want a good story. You didn't want things to be explained that were established in the previous film. You didn't want a nice follow-up. You didn't want... Uh, to understand more about the the resistance and how the republic fell apart or how snow you know stuff that would have been in no you just wanted new that's all so if something's just new it's good if luke comes out and takes a shit we've never seen luke take a shit before it's good because it's new once again very simplistic argument this is what i hated when will was saying a couple weeks ago patrick was right no he's not right because this is a simplistic stupid argument you can't just tell me i just wanted something new thus it's good anything can be new anything can be new you have to explain why that new thing is unique and interesting and why it works. It can't just be because it's new. If all you wanted was something new, anything new would have made you happy. Which then why does your fucking opinion matter? Beat for beat repeat of the original trilogy. I wanted Star Wars to surprise me. To expand the scope of what a Star Wars movie could be. And also, of course, I wanted a rip-roaring good time. And that is exactly what I got. Right from the opening scene, I could tell something was unique about this movie. The movie that it was boring and bullshit and weird? I felt the same way, but in a completely opposite direction. Like, that all, like, it was different. That's how I felt, too. But not in the same way you did. I was sitting there like, oh my god. Like, I was worried. Pat fist. <laughs> Pat fist, that's fucking hilarious. Pat's sexier than everyone expected. I love that you didn't say that anyone expected, like, saying, you're saying everyone expected me to not be as sexy. I see what it is. You son of a bitch. You know, I didn't want Alien Covenant to be a good story. I just wanted something new. I've never seen somebody play a flute before with the sexual innuendo with another android in the Alien franchise. So it was a good movie. You know? I'll do the fingering. I've never heard that line in an Alien film before. Thus, Alien Covenant's good. That's the logic Patrick's going down. Yeah, as soon as Poe said the Yo Mama joke, I was like, Ryan Johnson's on to something with this movie. This is truly a unique experience. Of course it's making me angry. It's making me angry because it's stupid. I hate this kind of content on YouTube, Will. I hate this kind of content. This is what killed film analysis and people actually saying interesting things about movies. It simplified it for 12-year-olds. For this is the worst kind of content for the kind of stuff I used to love. I hate that people like this become popular with flashy editing and uh, just, just, just generic, uh, I mean, tricks. I mean, every frame of painting seems greater as the days go on. You know, and even his stuff was very generic when it came to the actual commentary, but... Uh, it's disappointing where we've gotten to. I mean, I, I give a lot of flack to Nerdwriter and those other guys, but at least they do kind of come up with a unique perspective. I mean, this is all of the arguments that were made back in December that were bad arguments. This is the arguments that were already made defending The Last Jedi. We've already had... Okay, stop doing that blood money. You're just not fucking with Will Stevenson. Leave Will alone. I like Will. I like... Oh my god. This is so bad. You're so mean. Will, I love you. Don't don't take that as a... I love you, Will. Don't think that that represents me. This doesn't represent me as a person. It begins with a space battle that is seriously one of the best space battles in the entire series, but near the <laughs> end, it does something amazing. In Star Wars, we've seen a lot Near of the end, it does something amazing. What What is that? ...battles, and in those battles, we've seen a lot of random rebel pilots die. 
but I've never really cared about them. No disrespect to Biggs and Porkins, but they were never really characters. Then why do you know their fucking names? By the way, it, it, you have to look at the context of the scene. Right? It's not that they die randomly, Bix and Porkins, and they don't matter because they're not fleshed out. It's because it's the event you're following Luke in that story, so you see people die, so you're like, oh, maybe Luke can die. This, this is pretty dumb. It shows you the risk and the skill of it. It's well executed in the context of what the scene is. Focusing all this time on Paige Tico, the sister, and making it its own little mini scene, uh, this character that dies and doesn't end up really mattering and is only kind of half connected to Rose's story, is executed in a worse way than those deaths. Those deaths are necessary, you know, characters dying off to, to raise tension. Well, she gets this big focus. It's overblown and operatic because it's a bad choice. It's, and it's honestly one of the better scenes in the movie, but it's still a bad decision because instead of focusing and developing dynamics between characters you like, Ryan Johnson shows he doesn't care. He just keeps jumping around and going to things that he finds interest in. I mean, that's one of the problems with Paige Tico's whole thing, but it's really just, when you think about the whole bomber sequence and how it doesn't make any sense, why are they so slow? Why didn't they blow her up? Why does she get to move dramatically perfect for this scene? It's like how contrived it is, and then her dropping it and grabbing it really lucky right on time and all that stuff. That That stuff's all really bad. And at least when they get blown up, it kind of makes sense. Like, man, they're really fine. Honestly, it's just a sense of tension that isn't in this scene. Um, this feels constructed. It feels like Ryan Johnson had to set up everything to be this way so things could go his way. It doesn't feel organic like it did in those other scenes you mentioned. And honestly, I, I don't care about Paige Tico. I remember just sitting there being fucking confused during this whole sequence and being like, oh, okay, this chick just died. I mean, it's dramatically moving in the most shallow way possible where the director's putting the music on real heavy and making these lingering shots and showing close-ups on her face that's supposed to make you feel, but when you're actually thinking about what's going on in the scene, you, you shouldn't feel anything because it doesn't make any sense. But if you like generic, manipulative filmmaking 101 blockbuster stuff, then sure... If you like the most generic stuff ever, then yeah, sure, it works on that level. It's that kind of scene. But um, that kind of stuff has existed in Star Wars before, and it's been done much better. But you're picking something you're particular, like, oh, we've never seen a rebel die that got so much focus before, so that's new, and that makes this movie special and great. That's not really an argument for this movie's great. And it's disingenuous because you're ignoring a lot of things about the scene and criticisms that people have with it. Or just main criticisms of the movie. You're focusing on these little particular things to try to explain why you love the movie. But really what you're doing is being, once again, disingenuous with what this film is and what people's problems are with it. You're, you're, just, you're setting up a whole argument that doesn't exist, and you're making really childish points. It's just stupid. Like, right there immediately, to focus even on this, is so generic and simplistic. I really like this scene. And ignoring the dense criticisms. Like, this is the problem with Last Jedi Defenders and the arguments we had back in December. Like, they never come in with anything about why the movie's great that's actually like, you know, that's a good point. They just say something and you're like, okay, can we move on? Now let's talk about all the things that don't make sense. They're like, no, 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 hold on. But I like, yeah, cool, you like that scene, but let's talk about how Luke's character doesn't really make any sense and how this hyperspace thing changes the continuity of the other films and... You know, why, why is their ship going so slow in the fuel and why can't they just go ahead and shoot them and why didn't Hodor tell the plan? No, 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 that doesn't matter. Let's just, this scene's dramatic. I like it. It's new. Okay, fine. That's cool. Now let's talk about the stuff that's stupid. No, 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 no. Hold on. But The Last Jedi shines a spotlight on Paige Tico and for two minutes, she becomes the star of the movie. Paige's desperate attempt to drop the bombs is more suspenseful and more emotional than anything in a battle scene since Luke's trench run. And as the movie reached this shot, I thought, holy shit, I've never seen this in a Star Wars movie before. And I've noticed a lot of people don't want that. They don't want new things in their Star Wars. That's not true at all. Most people want the total opposite. That's just a, that's a complete straw man argument. A lot of people don't want that. And he says a lot to be safe with that, so he doesn't say everyone. No, we wanted new things in Star Wars. You think I didn't want new things with Luke, Khan, and Leia? And honestly, that's not that new. We've seen things like that. We've seen people sacrifice and die for things in Star Wars. It's not that different from the opening scene to Attack of the Clones, where uh, Padme's clone chick gets blown up and dies for Padme. It's not that different. We've seen... So Anakin killing the kids, that was new. We never saw that before. Does that make it good? 
it, people don't like things because of bad writing or that things don't make sense or that the, the themes don't work or that it's just a poorly executed scene or that it's stupid or it doesn't really have an impact on the overall movie. It's not that it's new. People have never not wanted new things in Star Wars. That's what made the original trilogy so exciting is that things were new. You're saying people just want the familiar. They want the comforting familiar. They want Force Awakens, which a lot of us had problems with it being so... That was the main criticism of Force Awakens, that it was so similar to New Hope. Are you ignoring all that, that that's what people said about that movie? So originally, what people said about Force Awakens was, I remember when people defended that movie, they told me for two years. They said, they said they're going to explain everything that you have problems with. I go, okay. And they said, you were just upset that it was so familiar and that you didn't want anything new. And I'm like, no, I wanted new. And they're like, well, the next film will be new. Then this film's bad. And they're like, oh, you just didn't want new. But it's like, well, you told me two years ago I want new. So these people just keep changing their points every time a new Star Wars film comes out because they blindly defend it because they're the ones that have some kind of political attachment to it or some fanboy attachment that they can't separate it from from some kind of objective criticism. And But they're trying to say we're that way when we're here. Like, well, let's just have a discussion about why the film doesn't work. It's like, no, we can't do that. I, I'm going to argue from emotion. Well, if it, if all you have is an emotional argument, then why even make this video? You're not adding thing new to the conversation. This is just another generic Last Jedi video to get clicks because Last Jedi videos get clicks. This is why I stopped making Last Jedi videos because I knew what it was. I knew it was just clickbait. I knew you were going to get confirmation bias. And you're pretending that you're making this video with some kind of higher purpose than what it is, but you clearly just made this to get views and keep riding the wave of the Star Wars hate for better or worse, and almost as like, I don't know, there's so many things to read in psychologically for Patrick making this video. There's so many things that, that, that make me think so, because you wonder, is this a troll? Is this all just bullshit? I don't know, it's hard to, it's hard to believe, but, but especially when you say the Space Force thing, so you're sitting in the theater and you got emotional and thought the scene was new, but you realized that this was a movie made for children about space, well, then why'd you love it so much? If you think of it as just the simplistic thing, if you can narrow it down to just those two things. It seems like it's a lot more than that to you. Uh, I mean, I... Star Wars, and I think that's kind of a bummer. One of the reasons I love The Empire Strikes Back is that it's constantly surprising. The characters grow and change, it shows us amazing new planets and creatures, it changes our conception of Star Wars. And the most disappointing thing about Return of the Jedi is how it doesn't really do that. It mostly gives us a lot of things we've seen before, like... Once again, the most generic kind of thing you say about Return of the Jedi, that a lot of people say, we've seen this all before. Like, he's just covering tip one. This is what these people do. They, they use editing, and then they just say things that people have said for, like, 30 years or 20... Or things people have always said and act like they're presenting some kind of new argument, even though this is the conversation you have with every friend about Star Wars. And uh, it's just to get people to kind of watch it passively, but you're not really getting any information from the video. You can just watch it like, oh, I'm watching it and I'm just going with it. That's just the problem with the genre on YouTube. What people have done here is that they're not really providing any content. They're not really writing anything down. He's just saying very generic, broad things that have been said before because it's easy to say he doesn't actually have to do any work. And he can make a 20-minute video, get his ad revenue, get his views, add to his sub count, and be happy and act like he makes good content and he actually puts a lot of work into it. But really, he's not doing anything. This didn't require any research. This didn't require any time to thinking about, like, how do I come up with a new perspective on something? He's just giving you the same old thing. You know what, Patrick? I'd like something new. It really upsets me that you don't want to provide anything new in this video. That's really upsetting. I would have liked something new. But you just keep doing the same old thing. All these things have already been discussed. The Death Star are Tatooine. Its big new additions to the mythos are a forest and the revelation that Stormtrooper helmets can be played as drums. Which is actually kind of cool. But The Last Jedi isn't- <laughs> Oh, he's so funny. God, he's a funny guy. Which is actually kind of cool. It's actually kind of cool. You're such a funny fucking guy. When did you learn to be so goddamn funny? Light fucking speed. Like, seriously, I mean, the. <laughs> bum, bum, chicka, 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 chicka. Bum, bum, chicka, chicka, bum, bum, chicka, chicka. Sorry. 
wasn't content to recycle Star Wars greatest hits and just revisit old planets and reveal that everyone is related to someone that we've met before. It has a story to tell and a mythology to expand. I love that this movie finally shows us how the 1% live in this galaxy. It finally has someone use the Force to switch on a lightsaber. How's that the first time we know the 1% live in this galaxy? You just assume that they live better than the other people, which is obvious in what the movie shows, and... Wasn't Leia part of the 1% and Palpatine and the Jedi and all that? Like, didn't the prequels cover the 1% and classism and Star Wars? I thought it did. And it was very prequels, just the, the Canto Bite sequence. I never, I mean, for me, it just showed me exactly what I thought. And it wasn't the first time in Star Wars that we've seen them just show you what the rich live like or money. I don't, I don't even know where you're getting that from. That's just not true. It finally gives us an idea of what... I mean, it depends on what you mean the 1% even means, like... I... Yuan meant when he said... You strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Oh my god, that's so disingenuous. You motherfucker. You fucknut. Okay, that's not what Obi-Wan meant. Obi-Wan meant being a force ghost, which he was at the end of the movie, and then in the other films, and that's what the writers meant in the intentions. It did not mean that a force ghost can use lightning and stuff like that to destroy things. Why didn't Obi-Wan do that to fight the Emperor and Darth Vader in the in the, in the sequels? Well, I mean, why, why is this the first time we've ever seen anything like this? Just because it was cool and Ryan Johnson's like, I want to do something new because it represents the methods. Lotus burning down the path, the tree, the foundation, and telling him it doesn't matter. You have to learn failure. It's Ryan Johnson having to learn that he failed when he was making this film. It's him having to learn it. It's, it's him writing it. It's a subtext. him being like, I'm failing at making this movie. Um, God, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a Michael Moore level piece of editing right there. This is very Michael Moore. Except not funny. It gives us great new Force abilities that feel like natural extensions of what we've seen before. And speaking of the Force... That's the only thing that does kind of feel that way, maybe, is, is Kylo talking to Rey. I don't totally disagree with that. That's probably the best Force element that he came up with that doesn't feel that crazy. And I don't think anyone really argued with that, but okay, that's fine. No other movie explains it as well as Luke does here. To quote an email Jonah Hill once wrote describing a Jump Street map. That's not the best explanation of the Force. Yoda's explanation in Empire is better. Obi-Wan's explanation. The way Luke describes it's not better than it. What the fuck are you talking about? That's like, that's like fan fiction level writing how Luke describes the Force. That's not the best description of the Force that's ever been explained. That's just, just not fucking true. Why are you saying that like Men it's a Black fact? Crossover, it's clean and rad and powerful. I it's clean, it's rad and powerful. Jonah Hill said that, like, what? Why did you think that was funny? It's funny when Jonah Hill's saying it because he's talking about Men in Black meets 21 Jump Street. And you, and you go, you know what, he is right, it is clean rad. And, and awesome and funny and all that shit. But you saying it, it's like, in this context and in this video, it's like, that was just pulled out of your ass. That was a rabbit out of a hat, wasn't it? What the fuck does that mean? Like, all of the things you could have said, like, you could have quoted. And he just shows that as, like, some stupid rant. I mean... I mean, it's not a big point to hype on, but, like, what? Like, this is stuff he wrote. I'm just improvising things, and I think some of my lines are funny. I mean, he wrote a script for this. This is pathetic. This, he sat down and wrote this and thought that was a good idea. He didn't think, oh, maybe there was something better I could do there. You know, like... I want to bring up something that doesn't get talked about enough. Star Wars has always been weird. Remember the cantina scene? Remember Figrin, Dan, and the modal nodes? Remember... Um, everyone's always said Star Wars is weird. That's something that is talked about a lot. What are you talking about? Why are you acting like we we saying Star Wars isn't weird? I don't remember anyone ever saying Star Wars was normal. That the, are you trying to explain why this is a weird film? This is a weird film, as Plinkett said, and a lot of us have said, and I said in my original live stream talking about it. That's just a weird movie because all of the decisions are so insane, so such bad decisions. Like, okay, why would you choose to write this film this way, edit this film this way? Why would you make such jarring decisions and and not explain things. Why would you kill Snoke? And it made it weird. It made it have this clinical weird tone where things don't really make sense, even though he's trying to do these big emotional scenes. It's a weird film in that way. Like, how did somebody make this? It's not weird in as these creatures or these worlds are weird. We understand Star Wars has had weird stuff in it. That's not the issue. It's like, why is the movie itself a weird movie? It's just a weird film because things don't really make sense. Force Awakens... 
has weird elements, but it's not a weird movie. That's not what people meant by weird. It's it's him once again being disingenuous. He's trying to argue the whole weird thing, why this film's so weird to people when we watch it. It's weird and trying to spin that as a positive by saying, well, Star Wars has always been weird. This was weird. Remember this? Remember the bar? And it's like, yeah. Yeah, that one little scene. Yeah, I remember that being how weird. There's a fucking but... devil in there just chilling at the bar, and a one eyed tentacle creature in the trash compactor. Since the very beginning, Star Wars. How does that explain while Hold the Door doesn't tell her plan to Poe? Like, once again, you're just, you're just picking random things here. This is the definition of cherry picking. He's just picking at things. It's not even good cherry and picking. The last Jedi lives up to that legacy. The giant alien cow thing that Luke milks is one of my favorite additions <laughs> to this. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things. <laughs> These are a few of my favorite things. So this is one of Patrick's. So he loved when Luke milks the the tit monster. Okay, cool man. Series. And if you don't like it, no offense, but you have boring taste, and I don't want to be friends with you. Oh really, Patrick? You don't want to be friends with me because I didn't like that sequence. Yeah, it's, you're boring if you don't like this stupid, random, disgusting scene. How dare you? You just have a boring taste. It's like. I mean, if you're talking about, like, Holy Mountain and Jodorowsky, or maybe you're talking about, like, Fantastic Planet, or you're talking about something like that, then sure, okay, fine. You're like, okay, that, you know, that, you, you maybe have boring, you don't like King Crimson or something, whatever, you don't like Velvet Ar but, like, this? This is what you're willing to stand up for? This is your battle cry? I love how Patrick says this stuff, too, like, in the Plot Holes video. You're watching movies wrong, and then this being like, you have boring tastes and I don't care. Just, uh, Patrick, you couldn't be more boring. Please stop pretending that you're interesting. Like, this has to be a troll once again. This makes no sense. He's saying you're boring if you don't like something. Like, like what? But also, we've got the fish nuns and a hellmouth where the movie goes all David Lynch and those... How dare you say that's David Lynch? How fucking goddamn dare you compare that fucking stupid Ray Cave scene to David Lynch? That's nothing like David Lynch. I, I don't know why you'd even make that comparison. That makes me think you don't watch David Lynch stuff. Or you don't understand David Lynch. That's like saying Darren Aronofsky's like David Lynch, which people try to do because he's ripping off David Lynch. He might be ripping off David Lynch, but don't you be like, oh, it's David Lynch. This is like a racer head. Like, no, dude. No, it's fucking not. Yeah, I don't want to be friends with this guy anyway. Did he think I wanted to be friends with him? This is the hill he dies on the milking scene. This is when it dies. This is how democracy dies with a, with a creature getting milked by Luke Skywalker. Yeah, apparently that's one of his favorite scenes. I guess if he found this stuff f funny and interesting... You know... I guess this just shows you Patrick's worldview and what he finds to be good. I'd say, Patrick, you don't have... It's not that you have boring taste, you have bad taste. Crazy things hanging out on Canto Bite. Oh, yeah. Canto Bite. You know, that section of the movie... Editions, yeah. This whole series. We've got the fish nuns and a hell mouth where the movie goes all David Lynch and those crazy things hanging out on Canto Bite. Yeah, this, this, this is what I wanted. This, this was all... Thank you, Ryan Johnson. You genius. Bite. Oh, yeah. Canto bite, you know, that section of the movie that people hate, where they say nothing happens and it should just be entirely cut out of the movie. I could spend several minutes here talking about how it's important that we see the oppressed people in the galaxy and the hope that the resistance symbol... It's not important that we see any of that, the kid with the stupid fucking room. The bad kid acting, by the way, I didn't realize till Plank interview how horrible the kid it happens, acting is. It should is. just be entirely cut out of the movie. I could spend several minutes here talking about how it's important that we see the oppressed people in the galaxy. Like, that kid's acting right there is horrible. That's terrible facial acting. I forgot how cringe that stuff was. Like, oh, what bad decisions they made. 
like oh that's it's making me cringe but uh that stuff's not important it's just one of the themes don't make sense Mahler's talked about this but it's of the general there is themes of classism there is themes of failure there is themes of the hubris of the of the, the jedi and killing the past which is in the dialogue and moving on from that and deconstruction of star wars and meta aspects we get it we get those themes we get those ideas it's something that we completely understand it's just they actually don't make sense within the movie they all fall apart they're not meshed well together and ryan johnson clearly couldn't really flesh them out and he had to write the movie in a short amount of time by the way too he, he really didn't get years to flesh the script out which he said he had to write this in like a few months you know so that might have affected a lot of this he didn't get to flesh a lot of these ideas although looper's filled with plot holes and things that don't make sense actually so it's kind of a thing with ryan johnson he tries to do epic movies um but this stuff isn't important actually to the things in the movie you could cut a lot of this because one it hurts the flow of the movie a lot of these things don't actually connect and make it work they actually pull away things that from could have worked and it's really just a construction issue it's not that these scenes themselves like you're saying like i could say oh, these things are important well they're all important on paper but it's also execution and how things are connected you could convey these same themes and ideas in better scenes and be better placed in the movie where you position characters like poe like and Finn and where they are and where Ray are and how you get these ideas in the juxtapositions. It's not it's not that these scenes themselves like on ideas are horrible. As Jay said, the ideas aren't bad, it's execution. This is all poor ex poorly executed sequences that hurt the movie. And Ryan Johnson could have could have moved these ideas to other things and came up with a better idea and why you, you this is stuff that in your first draft you're like, oh let me change this up a little bit. There's a reason people just don't like this stuff. It's just not very good. So very. This is some of the worst filmmaking in the movie. Is Canto Bite? I mean, it's not just that we don't think it's not necessary. It's because it's badly done. I mean, this clip he used is a horrible. Like, it's a great example of like you're showing me and you're explaining, but it's like, oh, it's hard to watch. It's bad. Like, the and the hope that the reaction. symbol inspires. I could talk. The hope the resistance inspires to the republic that's fallen. That we don't know why that they live in. Why the fuck are they the resistance? Why is the first About order how so the powerful? Failures here caused by Poe and Finn are essential teaching moments in both of their arcs. But what I really want to mention... Yeah, the failure theme and teaching them in their arcs and how it matters that we all have to learn that we fail. Because it's Ryan Johnson learning that he failed. Trying to deconstruct Star Wars. That's why the lightsaber's being pulled. That's why Ray and uh, Kylo are pulling the lightsaber. Ryan Johnson realized he couldn't deconstruct Star Wars. He's pulling at that lightsaber, so he has to break it in half because he says, I have to fucking destroy it and just kill the past because I don't know what to do. That's what I really think happened. I mean, art doesn't lie. Creative writing doesn't lie. You put yourself into your movies, and usually it's your emotional state during the film and during the writing process. You start writing what's happening during the writing into the film. That's that's how it works a lot of the time. You're like, well, I'm going through this right now, and it changes. And I feel like Ryan Johnson was dealing with being overwhelmed and not understanding what his film was and um, insecurities, and I think it's reflected in the film. I think that's why it's not a confident movie. I think that's why it's a messy movie, because I think he was messy and complicated while he was writing it and making it. And I think that the more you analyze the film, the more these things have been revealed. I mean, the, the, especially the themes of what he's saying and doing. I mean, especially him attacking capitalism and the 1% and the animal rights message and clearly a feminist bent and strong females and things that also don't make sense. Like, why? what does Poe learn at the end to go against a, to just blindly follow authority? It's like, no, he has to learn to fail to succeed. And it's a deconstruction of the hero archetype that he represented in Force Awakens and all that kind of shit. Like... All that stuff, like, that stuff's just not that good. Like, you, you explain to me, like, okay, that's interesting. But then when you actually watch it, you're like, yeah, I see what you're doing. It's obvious. The subtext is in your face. The movie's overtly throwing this stuff in your face. It's not subtlety at all. It, it's, it's very much like, look what this is about. Look what I'm saying. And that kind of takes away the power that it could have. Or you go, well, oh, actually, kind of, that movie was saying this because he's throwing it in your face. He, I mean, there's, like... It's like Ryan Johnson thinks subtext has to be in a big font across the screen that you can't have it in the little moments and then they represent an idea over the course of the story. It has to be like, look what I'm doing. Because children love stories about the 1% and animal rights and, and, and failure and war profiteering. That's, that's children's favorite shit in the world. Sure are three very important things. Number one, a drunk goblin puts coins in BB-8, and that rules. Number two, it is now canon that Maz Kanata has had sex with Justin Theroux. Number three, watching rich people get their shit destroyed is one of the purest pleasures in all of cinema, and if you can't appreciate that, I feel sorry for you. What? 
I hope he doesn't mean that. I hope that's a joke, because seriously. Like, dude, wait a minute. Why do you take pleasure in seeing rich people suffer? Because you have some skewed view of rich people that they should give all their money to the poor and they didn't earn their money and fuck capitalism and all that. Is that what you're saying? Or are you joking? I don't... Okay, but let's get serious here. For oh, he was joking. I see. That was all funny. He was just playing up a character. Okay, Patrick. I'm just been joking too, my friend. Now let's get serious. This is the serious part of the video. This is when we get into the serious analysis. This is when we get into the real shit. For a long time now, I've had a beef with the original trilogy. See, Return of the Jedi reveals that Luke and Leia are twins, which makes Leia Darth Vader's daughter, and yet she seems to have zero connection to the Force and she gets zero closure with her father. Yoda says, there is another, but then she doesn't get to do anything. Anyway, this is a long way- That's because when Lucas wrote that, he didn't know what the fuck that meant because they were making it up as they go along. Also, you didn't really need that. You didn't need the Leia getting fleshed out force thing. It's not where the story was going. It just showed that there was hope and it was mainly just to use so Vader could say the sister line and then Luke could get even stronger. I mean, yeah, do I think the stuff in Return of the Jedi that some of its biggest flaws is Leia, Han, and Luke's relationship really takes a backseat to the other parts of the movie? Big time. I thought the love triangle was interesting. I actually think Leia being Luke's sister kind of makes the dynamic between the three less interesting throughout the movies as friends. It really, I don't think it's a great twist. I don't think it's nearly as good as the father twist. Um, I also think, I don't know, I just feel like there's not enough scenes with Han and Luke and Leia in Return of the Jedi. I don't think like we get enough of the original. It's one of my biggest problems with the film. We don't get enough scenes with Han and Luke in particular. Han spends 45 minutes by a fucking door. And all of it's about Luke and Vader, which pulls Luke away from the, the dynamic that we wanted. And they got separated in Empire. So we spent a lot of that movie without them together. And part of the hope is like, well, they're going to get back together in Return of the Jedi. And then they don't. So it sort of sucks because they had such a great dynamic. That's always upset me. But um, I would say Leia's Force stuff isn't one of the bigger issues. It's more just how Leia and Han don't get a lot to do in Return of the Jedi and how their stuff isn't as emotionally as interesting as Luke's stuff with Vader and there's and it just doesn't really carry over the relationships with the same level of, of realism and, and heart that Zempire strikes back. I mean that stuff's true, but uh Leia using the force, like I don't know, it just I I think if Leia using the force maybe a little bit on on uh Endor, but they, I mean I don't think it would make the movie that much better way of saying that but the okay. much maligned scene Whatever. where Leia uses the force to pull herself back into the ship thrilled me because in one moment it oh I get the Hunter S. Thompson Johnny Depp thing I, I did that at Halloween one year I Hunter S. Thompson because I wore the I wore the hat and the shirt and all that and I had the shirt it was like I yeah I, I kind of have that look about me told us that she did not spend the last 30 years trapped in amber of fucking course she can use the force she's a god nobody complained that leia could use the force it was the way she used the force that she did something that's fucking insane that she survived in space and flew and nobody talked about it afterwards or been like how the fuck you did that it's just this random one-off scene that's the biggest issue with that scene it's not even leia doing it it's just that it it happens and then it's not acknowledged for the rest of the movie nobody goes hey why the fuck did you just not die that was crazy. When did you learn that? It just like everybody goes with it because it's just this random sequence in the movie. I mean, like, that's the thing. It's not connected. Like, it's not connected before what happens and afterwards. And then Leia just ends up in a coma and doesn't do anything. But uh, all of us wanted to see Leia use the Force. I'd have had no problem saying Leia used the Force to stop something or move something with her mind. No one has a problem with the Force. That wasn't the complaint. They're complaining about how it changes the lore, it's something new, the scene itself really doesn't work. It looks stupid visually, it's a dumb new force power, but it, it, as a scene, it's just awkward. Because of how it's executed, it's not this, it should be this badass moment. You're like, fuck yeah. But a big problem is that when she comes back, no one's like, what the fuck was that? Holy shit, like it just happens. Like, it's like a lot of this movie, things just happen. Um, but yeah, the, once again, disingenuous, the complaint was not that Leia used the force. It's what she did in that scene and how it doesn't make sense. The complaint with Patrick was never, oh, of course Leia could, how, how dare Leia use the force? That's not what said. We all knew Leia could use the force. And yeah, yeah, she hasn't been wasting her time not learning things in 30 years, but when the fuck did she learn that? Does that mean that Rey can get shot into space and survive and Kylo and all that? Sh like what? 
Like, it's insane. Skywalker, which leads me to another thing I love about this movie. It directly addressed something that I've thought about for years. That maybe the Jedi kind of suck. That was discussed in the prequels. That's what the prequels were about, Patrick. It was about the Jedi sucking. It was about them being overconfident, trying to stop the Sith, but not listening to Yoda not being like, maybe Anakin's bad. And them not noticing that Duke is there the whole time. I mean, it, this is covered in the Plinkett reviews. One of the, the themes and one of the ideas being explored in that is the Jedi's code being bad. Anakin fights against it, being like, well, it's stupid that I can't be in love. It's stupid that I can't feel things, that I have to follow all these orders and there's not nuance to this. And that's something that's kind of explored in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi when you found out Obi-Wan was lying to Luke about who his father was. And Luke was kind of the evolution of the Jedi leaving that behind. That the Jedi's ways were outdated and 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 flawed. I mean that that's been a theme I'd say since Empire and all the Star Wars films. It's something that this film didn't just address in a new way in a line of dialogue. It's something people have said for years. It's something that's once again a generic Star Wars conversation talking point. And Ryan Johnson just wrote it in there with Luke saying it without actually exploring it and taking it to interesting places. He could have. He could have done something in a, something with that Jedi aspect, but he doesn't. He just have Luke say it was hubris and all, you know, um, which is another problem with this movie is that it takes things that could be interesting ideas and just has them as throwaway lines of dialogue and focuses on other things. Instead of like, let's focus on the meat of that, what it is to be a Jedi. Are the Jedi ultimately good? Um, but Ryan Johnson, I guess, didn't care about that. And this movie, just having it like be discussed a little bit and Yoda saying stuff about it, I mean, that's fine if you love that better about the movie. But once again, you're ignoring so many things that people have problems with because you're cherry picking once again. What? Like maybe their elitist monk-like rules where they bury all their emotions aren't especially healthy. And it's those strict rules that led Anakin Skywalker to freaking out and murdering a bunch of- This has all been said. Woo hoo hoo. This has all been said. Woo hoo hoo. This has all been said before. And if I put my lightsaber here, and if I call Patrick a queer, and if he says the same three things over and over again. Ooh, 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 it's all been said. Patrick sucks, I wish he was dead. Bunch of kids and becoming Darth Vader. And now we know that Luke tried to start a new Jedi Order. Kind of ruins Darth that he kills the kids. Like, Anakin just jumps crazy from, like... I've been betrayed that I'm going to kill kids, which makes his redemption arc with Luke just like, yeah, I couldn't forgive my dad if he killed a bunch of kids. It kind of ruins the redemption arc. It's like, God, he's that fucking evil. Like, it just makes him non-human at any Pretty point. Pretty much the like, same thing happened all oh, over. Oh, Padme's going to die. I'm going to kill some kids. For again. So when Luke says the Jedi don't yes, work. And that's not new, Patrick. The same thing's happening again that happened. It's almost like it's not new. Almost like Ryan Johnson took a bunch of things from the other Star Wars movies. I should just stop before they ruin things some more. I'm sitting there in the theater applauding and shouting, yes, thank you. But wait, let's slow down a little bit because that's not exactly what's happening here. Despite what- Your brain moves really slow, so I don't know how we could possibly go any slower, but for the sake of your video, I'm sure we'll do this, okay. Luke says at the beginning, the movie doesn't actually think the Jedi should end. After all, at the end, after Luke has learned and grown, he straight up says, I will not be the last Jedi. The movie doesn't want the Jedi to end, it wants them to evolve. This whole movie is about moving on from the past. I like The Force Awakens, and I think it does a great- Yeah, but it's- but as even Alliance says, kill the past, that's Kyle's philosophy, and it's not just on about moving on the past, it's all just trying to judge trying to make excuse that moving on from the past because I'm a genius. And my ideas and views of these characters in this world, like even Mark Hamill, I just don't like how you see Luke Skywalker. Like, it's Ryan Johnson trying to cover up the fact that he's writing stuff that isn't better. If you're going to say that, like, the past isn't good enough anymore, we have to move on from nostalgia, which Star Wars already covered in Member Bears, but we have to move on from these things. Or Woody Allen's Midnight Paris, which is an idea of being tackled in Last Jedi. You're not wrong. If we have to move on from these things, you have to replace it with something better. If it's going to evolve, you have to say we have to evolve in a more interesting, complex way. And he gets that point with Ray and Kylo at the end, but then he, he goes away on it. He just cheats on it. He's like, he reaches the hand out, and it's like, okay, this is the moment we evolve. The two of them team up, and we get a more gray universe but instead kylo goes back to being a bad guy ray goes back to being a good guy 
and the movie ends with good versus evil and the resistance going out to be good again and the first order chasing them, which is basically where we started at the beginning of the movie. Really nothing evolved. We're still in the same place. We're going in a circle again. Time is a flat circle. You're just going to do the same things over and over again. It doesn't It doesn't actually evolve. It hints at that it's going to evolve, but actually this movie doesn't evolve anything. If anything, it's one of the most sterile, non-developed Star Wars films ever. Things actually don't develop. It's really a movie where nothing happens. A lot doesn't happen in this movie, but people seem to think it does. Actually, a lot more happened in Force Awakens to that film's credit. Great job introducing interesting new characters, but the movie is obsessed with the past. It brings back the original status quo and the original conflict, and it's structured around story beats we've seen before, and full of images we've seen before. This movie, same thing with Last Jedi. It's filled with images we've seen before. It takes scenes, Vader and Luke in the elevator, her and Kylo in the elevator, shot comp shots are taken. Don't you fucking dare say that when that's the same shit's in Last Jedi. The throne room is exactly like the fucking throne room stuff. The lightsaber thing. He's just subverting these. He's like, these are images you've seen before, but now I'm doing something new. It's a gimmick in the movie. We talked about that. His subversion of expectations. I'm going to set you up with things that are familiar and then twist it. And then that becomes a gimmick in itself when you start to see things. You're like, oh, this is going to go down this path, but you know he's going to do something else. Because that becomes the whole gimmick of the movie. We understand that. That's one of the reasons the movie's bad, is because he does a really bad job at that, and then he keeps doing it over and over again. It's not because it's just like, yeah, the movie's filled with familiar things. So let's let's go beyond that point, whatever. Because the things that he does try to do new are so obvious, and that he's trying to do something new and interesting and get attention. That it's like a bad version of Game of Thrones, where people say this is the Game of Thrones of the Star Wars film, but really it's just bad Game of Thrones. But it's Game of Thrones Jedi season moves seven. Forward. I'm not going to spend ten minutes explaining how immaculately crafted the character arcs are, because that's all covered in a great video on the channel just right that you should go. Oh my god, you motherfucker. That video's horrible. That video was just ripped apart by Mahler uh brilliantly. Although the video itself's bad, it falls as a I love that you're just sucking his dick, stroking his dick. Once again. This is just right. This is Patrick. I'll promote your video. Yeah, we can we can just make money off it. But 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 what if I want to mention some of the? Fuck off, Patrick. No, that video is fucking horrible. That's not a good video. You're just scratching his back. Oh God, they. Oh, these cringy YouTubers, generic YouTubers, just trying to help each other and self-promote so they can build their channels up. Fuck you. Um, the, the characters are not wonderfully constructed. It's very obvious how the characters are constructed. Nothing that he's saying is insights we didn't notice. That's just people adding things they're writing the movie for Ryan Johnson. Once again, this was all discussed back in December. That's why I'm, I, I'm even having a hard time talking about it, because I'm having to go back and remember arguments and things. All of these things were discussed on forums and videos going back to when the movie came out. It sucks that we're having to go back again. And I cannot believe that Just Right and Patrick are saying these things that were said months ago that were mocked and laughed at back when people were defending this, this movie. Watch, but the movie beautifully weaves together arcs for Rey, Finn, Poe, Luke, and Kylo Ren, in which they all... Finn's arc, where he has the same arc in Force Awakens and he doesn't really learn anything. Oh, he joins the Rebels and he finally stands for something this time because he only half-hearted believed in the previous film because he was fighting for Ray and Poe, but now he actually believes in the Rebellion and has something to fight for, which he didn't have. What a brilliant character arc. And Kylo just goes on the, a whim. He's a good guy, and then he uh, conflicted. Then he becomes a bad guy when he kills Han. But then in this film, he's like, oh, I'm kind of a good guy again, but now I'm the bad guy. And then in the next film, he's just schizophrenic. There's not an arc there. Kylo's just random shit happens, the character. Uh, Ray's arc is that she finds out she's meaningless. Um, okay. And not to search and hope for anything. What are you doing? Yes. Well, fine. Jesus Christ. You should be sorry. I swear to God. You're like Ryan Johnson. You keep ruining my life. Hey, can you give me some water or something? Really? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'll learn from failure and move on from the past, finally all tying together right at the moment when Haldo tears a Star Destroyer in half in one of the straight up coolest moments in recent cinema. And if you're too hung up on the made up science in this fictional world of space wizards to enjoy that, 
then I weep for you. Because what Just enjoy the pretty images because the internal logic and the stuff that has to be thought out the rules of the universe when it comes to magic, science, the fantasy of anything, any kind of world like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, whatever. The rules don't matter. It's just a pretty cool moment. All you have to do is pretty... That's the most generic way to watch movies. What the fuck is wrong with you? It just has to be a pretty visual. It doesn't matter if it makes sense or if it follows the con... Hey, thanks. Yeah. That's some tasty water. But yeah, I love that. If you're too hung up on the made-up science, it's like... No, I don't have a problem with the science being made up. Yeah, the science is made up. Things don't make sense in Star Wars, but there's rules that we have to follow. They've never used it that way before, and then it makes you go, well, why didn't they do that in all the other movies, and why aren't they going to do that in all the later films? How can you ignore that and just go, I weep for you because you didn't like the... Well, I like the visual. I like the moment where the, the, the movie goes silent and the ships... It does look cool. It's probably the best part of the movie. It still doesn't take away the fact that that whole thing, like, ruins the continuity and makes you... opens up all these new questions of Star Wars now that, like... Kind of puts a big hole in the franchise. That doesn't mean it isn't a cool moment. Two things can be true at the same time, Patrick. That can be a cool move moment visually, as a special effect, as as a storyboarded idea, and then it also can make be a big fuck up. They can both be true. It doesn't have to be one way or the other. One more time. This is a movie about space wizards intended for children. But the point I'm oh making my is that God. this is a movie about moving forward. It is not, as some people believe, about burning the past or killing the past or letting the past die. Kylo Ren, while probably the best- Then why did Kylo say kill the past and let it die? Like, I don't know. Seems like that was part of the movie. <laughs> Just write off any criticisms of The Last Jedi. Things you shouldn't do on camera. Oh, Raven, you dirty, dirty whore. Of course, you like the bottle stuff. Yeah, Sansa Lamps does do a good job of subverting expect, uh, things that you see in thrillers and, like, cop movies. I guess that's a good point. Or, like, thrill. That's, a, that's not a bad point. We watch to find out. No, it's just because Kylo stuff just randomly happens, though. It doesn't matter if it parallels Luke, Anakin, and all that. No, it's just random. Like, Ryan Johnson sees Kylo and writes him in a different way from JJ. It's inconsistent. I could, anybody could write that character. You could just write a character who goes, he's evil and mad in the scene. Now he's good and happy in this scene. Like, we get the Rashomon thing. Like, oh, it's one pro to view and the other one, but it's really in the middle. Right? So because Luke comes in and tries to kill him because he senses this evil, Kylo decides to kill all the students, and they move on. Like, how does Snoke get involved? Like, these are important things. These are things that make this character's backstory make sense. Like, just because Luke felt evil... Uh, I love screwdrivers. He's willing to kill his best friend and, and sister's son. That's the, and then he, decide, he changes his mind, but Kylo wakes up randomly at that moment and goes like, Oh no, you're there in the tent with your dick, and you're gonna rape me, Uncle Luke. And then they clash dicks, and um, he drops a roof on him, and then Kylo says, I'm not gonna kill Luke, but I'm gonna go kill a bunch of his students, because, like, why? Like, he's just a character that does things. He's like a retard. I mean, he's a crazy person. He's just crazy. Like, things he does doesn't make any sense. Best new Star Wars character since Yoda, other than Dexter Jester, of course, is a selfish, entitled piece of shit. And while the Why do people keep saying this? Why do people keep saying Kylo's the best new character? They just like Adam Driver. That's all it is. People like Adam Driver, the actor, because he's a better actor than Daisy Ridley. Although he's not better than Oscar Isaac, but he gets more to do. Because he kind of looks cool, the design's kind of cool and all that, and he has a cool lightsaber. So they all like him, it's very shallow. But every time they try to explain why Kylo Ren's this great character and he's so interesting, like, people say this shit all the time, but it's like, he's not a character. He's just Mr. Rando. Mr. Rando thinks, I mean, he's the whole capsulation. He's a bastard of fan fiction, as I've once said. He's, he's an illusion. He's just a, he's not real, you know? He's, he's an idea of a character, but he's not actually a character. You don't actually understand Kylo Ren's motivations. You don't actually see him get developed. You don't actually see things, all, he's, all of it's meta. 
All of it's him representing something. Star Wars fanboys and looking up to Darth Vader and being a lame Darth Vader. It's all it's all ideas. It's not actually a character. He doesn't actually ever feel and 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 act like a person. That's the. I mean, he's he's actually a horribly written character that people give a pass because Adam Driver is just kind of a weird fucking. It even works in the Kylo show. I went out of my way on my own show. I made a fucking show called The Kylo Show where I gave Kylo Ren a backstory with my friend who looks like him, which if you haven't watched it, please watch it on Please Rewind. But The Kylo Show was all about that, that I was being like, comedically, I'm going to give this guy who has random uh, outbursts of emotions that don't make sense. I, that's part of the joke of The Kylo Show was these emotional payoffs that aren't earned. That Kylo randomly becomes a nice guy and then an asshole from scene to scene because that's his personality. But I actually gave him a motivation with this friendship with this guy Dave that Dave's a flame trooper and he used to start fires but now he has to put a fire out and that fire is Kylo Ren. So it's a guy learning to, to put fires out and Kylo learning to reconnect with someone again after being separated from his parents and uncle but then Snoke takes that away from him so he just becomes an evil asshole and it leads into Force Awakens, right? That was the whole idea with the Kylo show, right? But th that was me trying to say, like, li listen, it's not that hard. Even in a YouTube parody little series, you can have scenes where Kylo's talking to someone, and at least you get some idea of who he is. It's kind of playing on what they try to do with Rey and Kylo in these scenes, which, to be fair, I think are some of the better scenes in the movie, are Kylo talking to Rey, at least a couple of them, the scene with the water in his hand because she gets all wet looking at him. Um, that, that stuff could have worked. That should have been the movie, is really getting to know this guy. But yeah, like I said, he's not a character. And he's definitely not the best character since... I mean, and also, once again, there's been so many shitty characters and nothing of note since Yoda. People just saying that. It's like, that doesn't mean it's good. ...point of view, it does not endorse it. One of the weirder aspects of the backlash to The Last Jedi has been how many people take Kylo Ren's side, claiming the movie really does want to kill the past, and in the conflicting stories about that night in the Jedi training camp, they believe him, not Luke. The movie is not saying we should end the Jedi. It's saying we should take some of their lessons, but maybe not the dogmatic interpretation of their way of life. I mean, guys, Yoda shows up and straight up states the theme. Yes, that's that's why it's bad writing. Yoda just says the theme, all the themes, all the things you're saying are just said. You're saying like, guys, Yoda just says the theme. You missed this brilliant piece of writing in the movie. It's like, no, we got the themes. That was one thing we criticized, that he threw the themes in your face, and we don't really like the themes totally. And they're badly executed because this is bad writing where you're just explaining your theme to the audience. You don't weave the theme into the movie organically. That's that's bad writing, Patrick. The greatest teacher failure is. When it comes to its like main... Yoda's messages and empire and all that, that, that subtext, it's like, oh, he's saying things and we can kind of think about it. There he's just telling you, like, I think it's that meta thing. It's being self-aware that it's a Star Wars film. Ryan Johnson's being completely self-aware of what the film is themes this movie is not subtle. which makes you aware of it being star wars and the sets and the special effects and how stupid and silly it is it kind of helps it takes away buying into the reality and what was kind of so gritty and lived in about the first star wars movie about new hope ryan johnson makes you go like oh yeah this is just a bunch of stupid space wizard stuff and all this stuff's kind of silly and doesn't make a lot of sense and it's yeah it's because i i think one he didn't understand star wars and he didn't know how to make a movie like this but another thing, it's almost like he has this hatred for it. And yet a whole lot of people miss what he doesn't doing have because that they'd hopeful. rather obsess about how, I don't know, force fields work. Now while... Once again, he's being completely disingenuous. He's strawming an argument and saying, like, you missed the point. We didn't miss the point of any of these things. Everybody understood this, and these were a lot of the arguments. You're being full of shit. You didn't see something that other people didn't see. Ray, Poe, Finn, and Kylo all learn from their failures and grow as people. Side note, Finn's arc is the best, and the moment when he wrecks Phasma and probably declares himself to be rebel scum is my favorite moment in the movie. The best example of this is Mr. Lucas Skywalker, drinker of milk and catcher of big fish. Now, I love Luke- Dude, what? Finn doesn't have an arc in this fucking movie. And that's definitely not the best arc in the movie. In fact, it's arguably the worst arc. Because really nothing happens. His plotline's boring. You lose the connection he had with Poe and Rey, which is what was interesting. Because I liked Finn in Force Awakens. Once again, the writing was bad, but I kind of liked John Boyega. I liked the idea of Finn as a stormtrooper, but... Um... Yeah, no, oh god. Once again, these are just bad points to be making, too. Like, there's so many other things, like... You can make an argument that, like... 
if you really want to go, you could say Luke has the best arc or something. If you really wanted to say that, even though I don't think I don't think Luke's arc is good, but you could you could make the point of view. But Finn, it's like really Canto bite and all that stuff. The stuff with Rose, kiss from a rose. Luke Skywalker. I love him when he's whiny. I love him when he's heroic, and I really love him when he's conflicted. And in the conversation around The Last Jedi, I've discovered that a lot of people have misunderstood Luke Skywalker for a really long time. Luke's pres So only I understand Luke Skywalker. This was another thing people did on Twitter when they are defending this film. You don't understand Luke Skywalker. Then they explain their interpretation of Return of the Just Last Jedi and Luke's things. And I always quote them going, you didn't understand Luke Skywalker. My version of Luke Skywalker is the only correct one. So arrogant and audacious to say, I understand Luke Skywalker, you don't. My subjective viewing of his character and his arc and his story is mine. It's like, why, why why, do you get to decide who Luke Skywalker And why do you tell other people they don't understand it? And then I guarantee you all the things he's going to say are really obvious about Luke Skywalker. The presentation here is one of the most controversial aspects of the movie. They took our hero and made him a sad, bitter old man. And yeah, I get it. It's a bit of a shock. Just look at Rey. She's shocked. She thought he was going to walk out with a laser sword and face down on the whole First Order. And Once again, that's that meta self-aware bullshit. He's acknowledging it's Star Wars and even saying laser sword. And no, it's not the fact that it's just a shock. I would like it to be shocking. I don't even mind the idea of Luke being old and a little bit better. It's just those scenes aren't well written. They're not really that well done. Like you're ignoring what people actually have a problem with those scenes on their own merits. You're talking about it conceptually. Conceptually, I don't think people hate everything about the movie. You, you, have to, you have to talk about the actual execution, which he isn't going into. There's really no insight in the movie. He's very, very broad about everything. Like, this is what the scene's about. Isn't that great? Instead of breaking down why that's a good scene, why that's a good piece of filmmaking and writing itself. He's showing, he has, these, he's showing these clips like we're supposed to go, oh, yeah, but it's like, that's not a good example. no intention of doing that. Now, I spent an unhealthy amount of time reading the comments from this movie's detractors, and a ton of people wanted him to be off on that. Now, why are you doing that if this is a movie for space wizards about children? Space wizards about children. It's about children. If it's a movie about space wizards made for children, why, why are you spending all these hours doing that? Child. Island learning ancient Jedi secrets, getting more powerful, and then showing up to like pull star destroyers out of the sky and becoming a super saiyan, I guess. That would have been more interesting than anything in this movie. Like a lot of people say, like, oh, you wanted Luke to pull the star destroyer out of the sky, you just wanted generic blockbuster stuff. It's like it didn't have to be that. Like, I think the scene where he walks out and gets shot and survives is a cool idea. It's just it sucks how it's done. It's like, why can't he just walk out, go out there if he's just gonna die? Like, okay, he's a badass. I mean, Leia flew in space like a Super Saiyan, Patrick. You just defended that scene where Leia flies through space like a superhero and survives dying in space. That's literally the same thing as, like, Luke pulling a Star Destroyer down. If you're going to defend that scene and say that's great, and then say it's stupid that people wanted him to have superpowers like that, then, like, you got to pick one, Patrick. Like, honestly, Luke pulling down a Star Destroyer would be more badass than Leia flying in space. So, so Leia can survive... Die, where there's no oxygen, she would be free, freezing. She can just float there and then put like a force energy around herself and then pull herself back. How's that any different than Luke seeing his Star Destroyer and then having to like use all of his energy where like he's oh, he's almost like collapsed. Like like the Star Destroyer is coming and Ray, Poe, and Finn and them are all like, we're going to die. There's nothing they could do. And then Luke, he's just like, I mean, it shouldn't be easy for him. It should really be a struggle when you see his hand. Do you remember that great scene in uh, First Class where Magneto lifts the submarine out of the water and he puts like the fisheye lens on the hand and and uh, Xavier's going through his head and he's like, I know you can do it, Eric. I believe in you, Eric, and all that. And he lifts it up and it's this amazing moment because he's been having a hard time with his powers, but he's found the balance between the sadness and anger in his life and the, the happiness that he's found with, between the, the memories of his mother that were good and the anger he has to what happened to his mother in the Holocaust. And he learns to lift that submarine up. It's a really powerful moment. It's like Yoda lifting up the X-Wing out of the swamp. It's really powerful, right? So Luke pulling out of the Star Destroyer, people are like, oh, it's crazy and stupid. It's like, not really. It could be an emotional, epic moment. Like, it could, you could see the hand of the close-up to the camera, and you have a shot like that, and then you could have the music swell, and then you could see him trying to bring it down, but he can't do it, and they're blasting, and they're all looking at him, and the music's swelling, and then he pulls it, and then he slowly brings it down and crashes, and he goes, oh, is that how the starter story crashed in Jakku? And, you know, like, 
sure, it probably is too much. But if once again, if you're going to defend Leia flying in space, that's way less badass than that scene I just described to you, especially with the comparison to the first class. And you can do a scene like that that could be pretty cool in a movie, and you don't have to do it as this over-the-top Dragon Ball Z thing. It could just be a guy's hand and close-ups. And, I mean, honestly, that scene just sounds good. It's like a good scene. But Luke Skywalker is not a power fantasy. A New Hope is not about an ordinary kid becoming the biggest bad- well, what about Rey then, who is a power fantasy and is just about her becoming a super badass without any explanation she can do anything? Is that not a problem you have with these movies? That's a criticism people are bringing up? You're just ignoring that. Ass in the galaxy. He doesn't spend a lot of this video on Rey and that's for a very good reason. Not an ordinary kid who wants to be a part of something greater. To have a purpose in the universe. And as his story goes on, he does that, but finds out that it's way more complicated than he thought. Turns out his family is a fucking mess. It turns out that he's a little bit angry, and every so often he needs to put on some disturbed and get dark. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god, that's not nearly as good as my yellow take the the, the fall with uh Luke falling down. Uh, that's terrible. It's a wazzy, it's a woozy, it's fairy dust, it doesn't fucking exist, motherfucker. It never landed, it is a no matter, it's not on the elemental chart, it's not fucking real. Completely true, completely true, blood money. Oh, Kylo Show's much better. Yeah, no, Sharkfoot was really trying. Luke doing what he did in the <laughs> joke. <laughs> oh my god, Will. I love it, dude. I love you, dude, because every time you say something, somebody comes back with a reaction or something that's so fucking funny and just takes the air out of what you were trying to say brilliantly. Like, it's great. Like, and I love you, dude. I really do. You're great. Like, I seriously do, because you, you lead to those things. You allow this format to lead. Like, Blood Money's like, that's funny. Now we got something out of it. That's great material. Made him the pinnacle of what all Jedi strive to be. A joke. Oh, that's hilarious. Luke's By the way, that, that moment, yeah, someone said is already represented in The Last Jedi, where Luke throws the, the lightsaber and doesn't kill Palpatine. And Richard, that's the moment where he's the pinnacle of what all Jedi are supposed to be. That's, that's in that movie. And it's done guy. in a much better way. And to return to him 30 years he later... He even and... says, I'm like a Jedi like my father before me. That's the moment where he represents the, the pinnacle of what a Jedi could be. Have him be an ultra-powerful paragon of goodness would be pretty boring. You know who else is complicated? Ray. You know it's also boring? A really generic hermit character that we've seen a thousand times that's motivations don't make sense, whose backstory's poorly fleshed out, and who just... I don't know, it says he's going to teach three lessons and then doesn't, and, and then just shows up at the end anyway. Like, that's... Like, it doesn't have to be boring, Patrick. If it's well written, that idea of Luke doesn't have... Nothing has to be boring. You're just saying it is. Also, Rey is not complicated. Once again, she's just an idea, not even a good one. You're saying, you're going to bring all those things. Rey's parents, her conflict, all this, all this bullshit. It's like, that doesn't make her complicated. None of that makes her a complicated, conflicted character. That's stuff that we all get. That does ignore the where does she get all these amazing force powers out of fucking nowhere. She doesn't have to do any training. Anakin trained for years with Obi-Wan. Luke trained for a long time with Yoda and Obi-Wan. She did no training. She just knows how to do things with the force. She's good at everything. She's just the most likable character. That's what they always say, like, oh, she's a good person and she's trying to do the right thing and all that stuff. They never, like... Ray has no character traits. Ray's not a character. Stop it's trying to make that she gets accused of being a flawless character who never makes mistakes because, man, she has got problems. She has no idea what to do with herself and keeps running to different people, hoping they'll provide her with some sort of guidance. She plainly states it. I need someone to show me my place in all this. And this brings us to- None, none of those are mistakes. She doesn't actually make a lot of mistakes. And you're saying those are problems. It's like those are only problems because they didn't spend any time writing anything to avoid those problems and actually giving her a character arc and having things make sense and having her have good relationships. That's because it's badly written that those things are there. Like, the incredible moment when Kylo Ren reaches out his hand and offers her a place she can belong. These movies have had a lot of moments where bad guys ask good guys to join them, but this was the first time 
that I thought there was a chance the good guy might actually accept. Because we don't know Ray or Kylo, because once again, they're, they're not defined or feel like real people, so we don't know who they are. We don't know what Ray will do because she just does random things. We don't know what Kylo will do because he just does random things. That's why you think that, because you're like, well, anything could happen. The next movie could start with anything happening, just like this movie randomly starts with, oh, they're getting chased by the First Order well after they just blew up the... Uh, the Star Killer base. How the fuck did this happen? Because it's just random, and we jump into it. Like, yeah, and Finn just recovered within a few hours. Cause fuck it, that he got his spine cut up. Like, yeah, it's cause it's cause things just randomly happen once again. Cause things don't have flow. They don't have an organic flow. That's why you think that literally anything could happen because nothing matters. And that is the mark of good storytelling. So I talked a lot about how I <laughs> oh wanted this movie goodness. to push Star Wars forward. And, and that is the mark of good storytelling, that, that these characters are so poorly defined and things just randomly happen that this could happen. I love you, Will. I really do. Oh, it was deleted, really? That's hilarious. new things and it did all of that but i also said i wanted a rip roar and good time and it is absolutely 100 percent that <laughs> the thing begins with a space battle and ends with a desperate last stand where the resistance has nothing to use but ms dos computers and janky little fighters on a salt planet and porgs are popping up everywhere and fast sorry i was looking for the smoke for the point that patrick was going to make but i couldn't find one um, yeah, it was a rip roar and good time. It was hilarious and fun. It, the film starts with the space battle, which I brought up before, but like, yeah, characters go woo. So it's fun. Has a Anakin went, little Anakin and Phantom Menace was like, whoa, or two. This is an easy. I guess that was a fun movie. Spear, and every single thing in this scene rules so hard. And also, this is the fun. Except that it was all choreographed, and you could tell people were waiting for their turn, which Plankett brilliantly Planet, showed another people. And porgs are popping up everywhere, and Phasma has a sweet spear. And every Phasma has a sweet spear. Yeah, look, look at this. Like this guy's thing, like this rules they're so walking up slow. This guy walks away. I mean, this is just such bad choreography. I mean, they're wrong. It's, it's like well lit. This is good cinematography. His cinematographer's good, and the special effects are good. But it's a two hundred fifty million dollar film. Of course, it fucking looks good. Like, yeah, no shit. Most most aspects of movies look good these days. But uh, this, not everything about the scene fucking rules. Also, people really overrate the scene. I like the scene well enough. It's okay because nothing really happens. But people really act like this is the most amazing action scene ever because the camera's just moving and then people hit things. It's like, it's really not that great of a scene. It's like, it's like a bad version of somebody trying to do something like from The Raid or daredevil or something like that it's not this isn't some great awesome this isn't an awesome hundred top action scene moment like people try to make it out to be it's just an okay moment in a bad movie well hard and also this is this is the funniest goddamn thing i feel something you feel it yes i feel it that's the force really wow it must be really strong oh, with you. Never Ow! and yeah guys i will say that's a joke in the movie i like that's one of the only jokes in the movie I like, but I don't think it's like the funniest thing. It's 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 amusing. It's a chuckle. Now this is a terrible movie. Oh no, it it does suck what they did with her as playing Phasma. What a waste. This movie is funny. I know you love old sourpuss Christopher Nolan and the stoic dour tone he brings to everything, but lighten up. You ever see Goodfellas? What the fuck is this random thing with Christopher Nolan? Like, hey, I know you love the sour Christopher Like, that's not what I wanted going into Star Wars. I didn't think about it being like a Chris Nolan movie, but okay. And honestly, Chris Nolan movies are funny. Dark Knight's funny. The Joker scene's like the pencil scene's really funny. Memento's filled with funny scenes. The part where the guy shoots at him and he's like, I'm chasing this guy. And then the guy shoots him and he goes, oh no, he's chasing me. That's hilarious. Like, I mean, not all of Nolan's movies have comedy. Dunkirk doesn't have comedy. Insomnia doesn't have a bunch of comedy. But uh, Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and Rises all have jokes in them. Inception has jokes in them. Like when he kisses Alan Page and he's like, you know, like, oh, we need to act like we're making some kind of contact. And then he just does it as an excuse to kiss her. Like, Nolan's films don't lack humor. Um, he's going to bring up that Goodfellas is funny. Um, yeah, Goodfellas is funny. It's a really funny movie. It's filled with hilarious improvised dialogue and scenes mixed that are that are really gritty and dark. Because these guys were funny. And yeah, Goodfellas is funny, but 
what a weird false equivalency strange comparison like goodfellas is hilarious so thus this movie's hilarious because it tries to be funny with these bad jokes like and also comedy subjective so just because you think the movie's funny doesn't mean that it is but that's that's not really like this heavy criticism it's a tone imbalance that this film has are you seriously trying to say like ryan johnson scorsese that movie is funny it's also scary and tense and emotionally devastating. A movie can make you feel different things. Humor is good. Why am I even explaining this? And unreal- I, I don't know why you're explaining this. You're not making any points. You're just saying humor is good, so thus this humor is good because it's humor. Later, not I just not mention, why it's good. You're not explaining why it's good. how much I love Adam Driver's delivery. He's actually not explaining why anything's good. He's just saying things are good. This is good. Blow that piece of junk! Out of the sky! This is a movie about moving on. Moving on from failures and self- <laughs> Why am I even explaining this? And unrelated, but I just want to mention- Oh, whoops. Too how big. much I love Adam Driver's delivery of- Blow that piece of junk out of the sky! This is a movie about- That's like it's in a comedy. Moving on. Moving on from failures and selfishness and self-loathing and empty heroics. Everyone has a different thing what this movie's about. People say this movie's about failure. They say it's about the past. They say it's about deconstruction. They say it's about hope. I've heard people say the theme is hope because there's hope at the end. And then he's saying now it's about moving on. So everybody says this film's about something different, which is fine. We all can have different interpretations of movies. But he's like, this is what this film's about. It's like, actually, it's about a lot of things. It's not just about that. That's not the only thing Last Jedi is about. There's a lot of things going on. Moving on from only certain families being special and everything being like it was 30 years ago. Moving on from the same old story beats and the same old status quo. I love Star Wars. I love the world and the characters and the feeling I get every time. No, what's with the Goodfellas comparison? I know it's it random. The screen as the fanfare explodes out of the speakers. And watching The Last Jedi, I was hit by a thought. For the first time, I could see this story continuing for decades to come. It was the moment in the Battle of Crait when the Millennium Falcon arrives with Chewie in the pilot seat and Rey operating the gun turret. Yeah, that random moment where she escapes in Snoke's pod and then ends up in the Falcon down on Crait and is all happy and smiles and shooting and... Uh, yeah, that's a... My mind flashed forward years from now and I thought about how we'll talk about Star Wars in terms of eras. There will be constants through the series. The Millennium Falcon will remain, but we'll talk about the era when Han Solo owned it, or the era when Rey did. And this was all because of things The Last Jedi did. This was no longer a... Now, this is just because they're making sequels, and that would have happened anyway, and you know Disney's going to make like 30 of them. That is not exclusive to The Last Jedi. Like, just the fact they're making sequels lets you know that they're going to keep making Star Wars. I don't know why this is the first time you felt that way. Huh? A story okay. about special people from a few select bloodlines. This was a story about a whole galaxy. He's trying to do that emotional thing. Let me do my montage with music and be all emotional and get you emotional so you can feel what I feel and why this movie's great, even though he's not saying anything. People who shape its future could come from anywhere. They could be anyone. From here, Star Wars could go anywhere. And each time I watch it, I... Yeah, the, the Force doesn't matter anymore. Anyone can have it. Anyone can be awesome at it, like this kid... Villains don't matter. Politics don't matter. Nothing matters. Anything can happen. It can go anywhere because, once again, that nothing has to make sense anymore. I can just do whatever the fuck I want. I found that idea more... We usually call that fan fiction. ...more moving. I don't care who that kid with the broom is. It doesn't matter. What I do care about is the hope and determination I see in his eyes. Ever since... <laughs> <laughs> okay that's cool baby that's cool what the fuck is he talking like he's narrating the history channel I know I know since George Lucas made that first film Star Wars has been about how an ordinary person can escape their circumstances and become a part of something You could great. do all of this for any movie. Batman v Superman, you could do... I was going to parody this and use all the same points for Batman v Superman, the themes. Like, this movie's really about this and and how Superman's flawed and, and Batman... Like, you could take all the themes and the, and the religious connections and the geopolitical things and... Um, you could do this with any movie. You could talk about the themes in the room, about friendship and the talented Mr. Ripley stuff that Tommy was influenced by. You could do this with any movie and say these things. None of these are good. None of this is good analysis or things that are actually giving insights to the film. He's just saying 
Broad generalizations, generic things, trying to emotionally manipulate you to get you to think this movie's actually good when it's bad. Um, he just knows his comments are going to blow up and his views. I mean, this this video is pointless. This is a very pointless video. Later. He says and nothing in 20 minutes. Is a movie that understands that. Okay. And now, because I couldn't find a more natural way to incorporate them into the speech, I want to just mention a bunch of random little things I love in this movie. The incredible texture and color palette of Steve Yedlin's cinematography. John Williams' score and how he weaves together countless leitmotifs from the entire series. This line. Wipe that nervous expression off your face, 3 po The Giallo-esque design. The Giallo-esque design. Jesus Christ, you're just, just trying to get hipster. Oh, I know Giallo-esque design. <laughs> Patrick, stop it. Um, yeah, cool. The cinematography was good. Yeah, that doesn't mean the writing was good. Like, okay, you're pointing a little... Like, yeah, nobody really said the cinematography was bad. So it's never been a chamber, criticism. R2's cheap trick. When the Porgs are poking at the lightsaber. When the sad Porg looks at Chewie. When the Porgs... Man, he really likes the Porgs. ...screeches during battle. When the Porg hits the window. When Chewie swats the Porg off the dashboard. The Porgs are great. Puppet Yoda. The way DJ wears... Why are Porgs great? I don't know, right? His boots around his neck. The moment when Hux thinks he can kill Kylo. When Poe rubs BB-8's belly. The whole design of Crate, so that as warfare breaks out on the planet- Well, this guy really has some- he just- <laughs> It actually looks like it's bleeding. Luke's wink at c 3 p It actually looks like it's bleeding. Yeah. The way Luke first saw Leia via a projection, and the last time she sees him is a projection. See? It rhymes, like Luke- I mean, yeah, those those aren't bad little details, but once again, that doesn't fix all of the mountain hill mountain of problems. It adds, like, yeah, the the hologram thing, the project. Yeah, I picked up on that. That's a cute little thing. I picked up on that. That's a cute little thing. Yeah, I I I didn't hate it. Ryan Johnson's not a terrible director. Totally, he knows how to make little visual things that work in a movie. Most of the criticisms fall with the screenplay. Like, yeah, that's a that's a cute little moment. But like, loves. This is a weird movie to talk about. This video ended up being longer because it's a weird fucking movie than it should need to be because it's not enough to say why I think the movie is good. I also have to preemptively respond to all the people who are going to say, but why didn't you talk about this thing that's bad? Months ago, I said there was no- You didn't, you didn't go into any of that stuff because you have no answer to any of that stuff. And you really didn't go into anything. Like, you should, you could have just done this in five minutes. You stretched this out for no reason. I don't know why this video is so long. I really don't. I don't know what the fuck. Like, he spent so much time with these. Like, you didn't need to say that. No way I would make this video. But the truth is that since December, I haven't stopped thinking about The Last Jedi. And to all the people who hate it, I wish that you could see what I see. Because it's pretty great. I wish I could I wish I could be retarded too and see this shitty film is a good movie as like a lot of you do because you're making it up to yourself so you're projecting these things on the films you get to project things on a Kylo Ren and Rey that's why people love it they get, they get to make this awesome story up in this awesome movie that it's not that it's that it actually isn't you get to do that watching I mean yeah I would love to do that too I mean that would be fun like that that's an awesome I, that's awesome that you can do that but like you you can't admit to yourself that that's what you're doing People get to project under Kylo Ren. They get to add these themes and this depth and all that because the films open themselves up to that. They'd be like, yeah, I can make this brilliant in my mind and explain these things and explain why these things are so brilliant because it's a Star Wars film trying to have subtext and be artsy. And it's like, well, yeah, but that's that's kind of what makes it shit is that it fails as that when it could be an enjoyable space opera or just a space adventure comedy like Guardians of the Galaxy or something. And we're done. Guys, thank you so much. You were Woo! fantastic as always. Now I am going to take this footage and put it online. I'll see you later. You don't think anyone is actually going to watch that, do you? I don't know. I would. That joke's horrible. Who is this jo Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. You know he fucks this girl too. Oh, Patrick. Yeah, joke wouldn't be bad. The mother being like, you know, who would watch this? That's kind of funny, but then that girl. I would. Like, oh, that's cringe comedy. I mean, granted, though, he thinks The Last Jedi is funny, so I guess this is his sense of humor. Oh, that girl's acting was horrible, too. I would. What what is the joke with that? How about I say Jedi Schmedi? No. <laughs>
That would have been funny. Dad jokes? And now a word from our sponsor. Oh, hey guys. I'm just wrapping up production on a new video. Making these things is very complicated. There are so many parts of the process, from writing to production to post-production. Now, some of this I learned in college, but most of it I taught myself through a lot of trial and error over many, many years. And back when I was 20 years old and trying to figure Really? This was complicated to make because this was the most generic kind of YouTube video I've ever seen. I, look at this equipment. He has this nice mic. That, like, he's wasting it on this. It's so disappointing to think this guy actually has money in these things. And actually probably knows what he's doing on some level. And he's wasting his time making shit like this. Figure out how to use lights and audio. Really, the guy, like, let's be fair to the guy, right? Patrick has good presentation. He has a nice voice. He has a nice presence on camera, how he moves and does things. He does a lot of that stuff very well. He, he, his audio's good, his editing's good. Like, I'm not gonna take anything away from Patrick. This is fine stuff, but like, his last series of videos, it's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this, this pause game, though. Holy shit. Oh. This fucking, this pause game's amazing. <laughs> He's like Sam Neill at the end of Event Horizon. I wish you could see what I see. Yeah, now I need to review Toe Jam and Earl. That's what this needs to be. Yeah, no, that's a clear thing. He clearly did it this long to make more money off ad revenue. What do you think of fucking... I know exactly why you made this 20 minutes. It was hard to get through this video, I swear. Yeah, I know. Good use of color. It's I know. It's Giallo. That's oh my god. I don't know if he realizes how cringe he is. He's just like it's great because that's his argument. It's great because I like it. Because this just shows you how much of a fucking shit shithead he is. Here, what... I really wish I had something like Skillshare who is sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community. Hey guys, thank you for watching, and I well, I'm just gonna say, please don't get Skillshare because they sponsored this fucking piece of shit video. God, that was bad. I mean, I, w I wish this video was just entertaining. It wasn't funny. He didn't say anything. Like, I mean, that was really my main issue with it. The video was just kind of a waste of time.